Let's make our way now down to the floor. We're going to practice some diaphragmatic breathing. So let's lay down on our backs. Let's find a comfortable position. You can lie in a supine position. You're welcome to use props as needed to get comfortable, but we won't be here for more than a couple of minutes. Let's review the diaphragmatic breath. And like a beginner, you might place one hand or both hands over your abdomen. Just to start connecting with the movement of the abdomen. When we inhale through the nose, our belly should rise up toward the sky. And as we exhale, it relaxes down toward the spine. Just practice breathing in and out of your nose. Belly expands as you inhale. Relaxes and flattens out as you exhale. In yoga class, we often hear about engaging our core. And although it, that has its place in certain asanas, we do want to be able to breathe fully, deeply, naturally. Just tune in to the gentle rhythm of the diaphragmatic breath and you'll notice there isn't much movement in the chest when you breathe deep in the lower abdomen. This is the way that we breathe when we were babies. And over time as we have experienced stress, held on to tension, especially in and around our torsos, that tension can often restrict our ability to breathe fully and efficiently. And the diaphragmatic breath is one of the most helpful ways to relax both physically and mentally. If you no longer need the aid of your hand, you can just place it back down on the floor next to you. And remember, as we practice the asanas, as we come up against resistance or tension in the poses, try to bring your awareness back to the diaphragmatic breath. Okay, and let's prepare to come to a tabletop position. So let's bend our knees. You can either roll to the side and press yourself up, or if you have a healthy spine and it feels okay, hold on to the backs of your knees as you do a spinal rock forward and backward a few times along the length of your spine. And use that momentum to come to sitting and then we'll come onto hands and knees in a tabletop position. So let's place our hands, our wrists rather, underneath our shoulders, knees underneath the hips, nice straight spine. Let's do a few rounds of cat-cow just to warm up our spine and help us to connect with it as the center or core of our yoga practice. So let's start by tucking the tailbone under as we draw our abdomen in and up chin toward the chest, and then the opposite movement. Tilt your pelvis forward as you lift your sit bones, abdomen reaches toward the floor, chin lifts away from the chest. Exhale as you tuck your pelvis and round your back. Inhale as you tilt the pelvis forward and arch your back. So we're exhaling spinal flexion Inhaling spinal extension. Just follow your own breath, so go at your own speed. And feel like you're moving the entire spinal column as it connects to the pelvis. Warming up your back muscles, lubricating your spine for greater spinal health and flexibility. Let's do a 
couple more rounds. Feel like you're pushing away from the floor in both stretches. Stretching out the front and the back of the spine. Okay, let's come back to neutral and make our way up to standing. Let's start our asana practice in Tadasana, standing mountain pose. <clears throat> Check that your feet are hip distance apart, toes pointing straight ahead, equal weight on both feet. And you might even find it beneficial to rock forward and back a bit, even left and right. So there's equal weight distributed throughout the feet. Let's lengthen up through our legs, but keep the knees soft rather than locked. Think of your pelvis as being level with the floor, so neither tilted forward or backward. It's nice and neutral. Spine is neutral in its natural curves. And think of lengthening up through the torso, even through the crown of the head, like a string is pulling us upward. The chin is level with the floor. And you can either have your eyes gently lifted above the horizon level with eyes opened or closed. If it's comfortable for you, close the eyes for a moment. Lengthen upward through your body, creating a sense of lightness, readiness, and willingness to offer yourself into the practice today. Focusing at the point between the eyebrows, the seat of higher awareness in the body. And remember to come back to the center in between the asanas. Opening our eyes, I'll just briefly mention that the theme for today's sadhana surrounds the asanas. So the asana theme is modifications. This is just a great opportunity for us to review some of the poses we've been learning in the course so far and how to offer our students different ways to access the pose, whether they have a limitation, an injury, or a special condition. So let's get started with Utkatasana chair pose. Great for energizing our legs and strengthening our knees. So with the feet hip width apart, palms face forward, let's come into just the active phase of the pose first. So on an inhalation, sweep your arms to horizontal as you rise up onto the balls of the feet. Retain your breath for a moment as you bend your knees as though you're sitting on a high stool. And then exhale and breathe naturally. So your heels are lightly lifted here. Spine is straight. And you can either be straight up and down vertical with your torso, or if you find it helpful, you can draw the hips back a little bit as you lean forward. And that can help to engage the glutes along with the thighs so that hopefully you feel a little bit lighter in the pose. So this is a great modification for students who have knee sensitivities or injuries because they don't have to go all the way down into the full pose in the second phase. So let's take a couple more breaths here. Feeling the strength of our legs, the energy gathering there. And to come out, let's inhale, raise the arms, exhale as we release them down. And just pause for a moment, take a couple of breaths. Feel free to close your eyes and just notice how you feel. Okay, let's try that again, this time with the affirmation and the second phase of the pose, if it's right for your body. So with palms face forward, inhale as you rise up onto the balls of the feet. Hold the breath for a moment as you bend your knees, and then exhale and breathe naturally. Soften through the chest as you lengthen out through the arms. Try to feel a sense of lightness, both physically and mentally, as you silently affirm, my body is no burden, it is light as air. My body is no burden, it is light as air. 
Now if you're protecting your knees, please stay here. If you've got healthy knees, you can exhale now down into the second phase of the pose, which is called the relaxation phase because we want to be able to relax our legs as much as possible. If you're unable to do that, please come back to the first phase or use props as needed to support you. Hands are at the junction of thighs and abdomen. Spine should be straight, so avoid leaning forward here. And let's affirm once more mentally, my body is no burden, it is light as air. And to exit, let's inhale, sweep the arms forward, reach upward and exhale. Relax, close the eyes, lift the gaze. And now silently affirm, my body is no burden. It is light as air. Okay, let's try the pose one more time. This time when we come into the second phase, I'll show you an option for uh, not coming all the way down into the pose, which can work for some folks with knee issues. So let's inhale as we come into that first phase. Hold the breath as you bend your knees. Exhale and breathe. A couple breaths here. And remember, you can stay here if it's better for your knees. And you might try this optional phase where you don't bring the buttocks all the way to the heels. Much more energizing, but can work for some folks with knee issues. And then when you come out, if it's too stressful on your body to sweep upward, too stressful on your knees rather, Bring the hands to the floor in front of you. Straighten up through the legs and inhale to exit alternatively. Okay, so that's another option for exiting for those who need to protect their knees. So just take a moment again to close the eyes. Notice how you feel after practicing Utkatasana chair pose. Hopefully you feel that surge of energy rising from your legs. Next, let's practice Ardha Chandrasana, Half Moon Pose. Let's step our feet together with the palms face forward. Let's inhale, circle the arms up as we rise up onto the balls of the feet. Interlock your thumbs and then exhale as you shift your pelvis over to the right side, reach your arms up to the left. So again, I'm mirroring you here. So arms stretching up to the left. And as we tune into modifications today, feel free to bring your left hand down to the pelvic rim, even just to experience what it feels like. The heels are lightly lifted here. And this is a great option for people who just need a gentler version of the pose. Maybe they have a spinal sensitivity or injury. Maybe it's osteoporosis where they need to avoid that excess spinal flexion and they can focus more on having a straight spine. If you want to practice the full pose today, feel free to interlock those thumbs again, but just know about these options for our students who need smaller steps to work toward the full pose. Let's take a couple more deep, complete breaths. And then to exit, let's inhale, reach up. Exhale the arms down. Bring those feet back to hip distance apart for a moment. Pausing in Tadasana. Sledding the body integrate between sides, between poses. And then let's repeat on the other side. Step the feet back together, palms forward. Inhale, rise up onto the balls of the feet. Exhale as you Bring the pelvis over to the left side, reaching the arms to the right, softening the shoulders down. And feel free to bring that right hand to the top pelvic rim as we lift up and over with the spine so there's no sense of collapsing through the ribcage. The heels are lightly lifted and whatever version you're in, let's try to feel the outer hip rising a little bit higher than the inner hip. 
So there's a sideways tilt to the pelvis. And of course, this is a vitalizing pose. So let's gaze upwards and silently affirm. Strength and courage fill my body cells. Strength and courage fill my body cells. Inhale to exit, reach up, exhale the arms down. Relax and breathe, lifting the gaze to the point between the eyebrows. Notice if your breath feels more open, more free and dynamic. Okay, next let's come into Padahastasana, the jackknife pose, a standing forward bend. And let's start with just the first phase of the pose. So let's inhale as we raise our arms overhead, stretching tall. Exhale as you circle your hands to your thighs, begin tilting the pelvis forward, nice straight spine. And pause when you feel resistance, that first point of resistance, which is often felt in the backs of the legs. You're welcome to soften or bend your knees. And then inhale as you lengthen your spine. Exhale as you begin to just tilt the pelvis slightly further forward as the sit bones lift up and back. So this is just the first active phase of the pose. We're keeping our spine straight. And this is a great modification for our students who need to keep their spine straight in forward bands. Maybe they have a spinal injury, such as a posterior bulging disc. Maybe they have osteoporosis and they need to avoid rounding spinal flexion. So just tune in to the benefits of this first active phase of the pose. And then to come out, let's bend our knees. Inhale, raise the arms. And exhale. Let's take a moment to relax. Notice the openness, the length in the back side of the body. And then let's come into the pose again. And if you have a healthy spine, we'll take it to the second phase. But first, let's come back in with a straight spine. So inhaling. Lengthen through the spine. Exhale as you hinge from the hips. Reaching the crown of the head forward away from the tailbone. Let's take a couple breaths like this is the preparatory phase of the pose. We want to get the spine as open and long as we can so that when we do relax forward in a moment, those spinal pathways will remain open. Energy can flow to the brain. So let's take one more deep breath, lengthening the spine, and then exhale. If you have a healthy spine, allow it to round with relaxation, not with force. As you bring your hands down your legs, your hands might reach the front or backs of your legs or ankles. If your hands naturally touch your toes, you can wrap the first two fingers of each hand around big toes to create a mudra and then release the crown of the head toward the floor softening your upper body not using effort to pull the spine forward and our legs are remaining active here so we're lengthening from the heels all the way up through the sit bones and with each outgoing breath we're allowing any physical, mental, or emotional tension to dissolve away. Let's take a couple more deep breaths, silently affirming, nothing on earth can hold me. Nothing on earth can hold me. And then to exit, let's bend our knees like a beginner, place our hands on our thighs. And if you tend to get dizzy when you come out, tuck your chin toward your chest, keeping the chin down as we raise the arms. Exhale as we release them. 
That's a good way to exit for students who have low blood pressure. And then when you feel that you're able to bring the chin back to level with the floor. Let's close our eyes for a moment. Lift the gaze upward. Take some deep breaths, feeling the openness of your spine and also the calming effects of that forward bend. Nothing on earth can hold me. Let's balance that forward bend now with a backward bend, Muktasana, Freedom Pose, to energize the entire body. Let's step our left leg back two to three feet from the front toes to the back heel. I won't mirror you when I'm turning sideways, but let's bend our front knee, stacking it above the ankle so we don't want to overflex the knee. And remember, we want our toes and hips pointing straight ahead, ideally. But if you need to turn out the back foot for balance, just do so slightly. Let's distribute our weight evenly on both feet. And then inhale as we circle our arms up, connect the palms, and exhale as we soften our shoulders. On your next inhalation, lift the chest forward dynamically, bringing the entire spine into a backward bend. And we don't have to lean backward to experience the backward bend. So keep lifting through the chest, keep the neck long as you gaze upward. And remember, if you have tight shoulders, you're welcome to bend the elbows a little bit more in front, you might separate the hands, or bring the hands down to prayer position. And if you even just want to experience prayer position for a moment, see if you can keep lifting through the heart center even when you practice a modification. We want it to feel dynamic. Either way, let's take a couple more deep breaths in this pose, whatever expression is appropriate for you today. Feeling the energy rising through the spine as backward bends energize the spine. And then to come out, let's inhale as we step forward, reach up, exhale, relax the arms. Pause for a moment and close your eyes to recenter. And try to lift the energy that you might feel inside up to the prefrontal lobes of the brain in your forehead. And let's repeat on the other side. So we'll step the right leg back two to three feet, bend the front knee. Inhale as we circle the arms out and up. Exhale as you soften the shoulders, creating lots of space around your head. And then inhale as you draw the breastbone forward and up, kind of like a string is pulling it. And let's remind ourselves that for students with high blood pressure or cardi cardiovascular issues, would be better for them to bring the hands down to prayer position. And for students who just want a gentler experience of the pose, this can certainly help them to breathe more easily. So choose an expression that's appropriate for you, that's comfortable, but also slightly challenging. Let's keep our back leg straight as it helps us to lengthen up through the upper body. Feel like the heart is leading the pose. As we silently affirm, I am free. I am free. I am free. I am free. And to come out, let's inhale, step forward, exhale. Relax, closing the eyes. Let's become very still for a moment. As though you're withdrawing the energy from your legs and arms into the center of your body, up the deep spine to the brain. So the energy that we're awakening in the asanas should help us to feel uplifted 
raise our consciousness. Okay, we'll do one more standing pose, Trikonasana Triangle Pose. Let's take our feet wide apart, about a leg's distance apart, three and a half to four feet. And let's turn the whole left leg out, pointing those toes directly to the side. Then turn your back leg in a little bit as needed so that both knees would line up with the toes if they were bent. The legs are going to be straight, our thighs are going to be engaged to support our knees. And we're going to enter the pose in a modified way to remind our students how to enter correctly with a nice straight spine. So let's place our left hand at our hip crease. Right hand is much higher up on the waist or the pelvic rim area. And let's turn the chest to face forward as we inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, start to tilt your pelvis to the left so the left hip is dropping down. And you want to feel your spine come along with it. And you might check that your chin is aligned over your breastbone so the head is coming along. And then you want to pause when you feel that place where you can't tip further for it. So check that your spine's nice and long. Then if you want to add the arms, we can inhale and reach upward through that left arm. But keep the rib cage open as we bring the hand down. Inhale, other arm up. And then we can glide our chin back a little bit before we rotate the head to look upward. And if a student needed a modification, they might bend their knee slightly. They could take a shorter stance if it's too extreme for their legs. You could also place your hand on a chair seat. And you're welcome to bring this top hand down to the waist for a little bit more support. A little bit easier for those who have high blood pressure to bring that top hand down. Take a couple more deep breaths, lengthening up through the legs, out through the arms. And then to come out, let's bring our head back to center, bend the knee, inhale as we stretch out through the arms, point the toes forward, and exhale. You can close your eyes either in this wide stance or step back into Tadasana. A couple of deep breaths. Always noticing how you feel on an energetic level. And let's repeat on the other side. Turn the whole right leg out. Turn the left leg in. Place the right hand at the hip joint. Left hand up on the waist. Let's inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale as we tilt sideways. Moving the pelvis, but letting the spine stay nice and long. And pressing down through the feet, engaging those quads to support the knees. Let's add the arms, inhaling, reach up and over to the right a bit. Don't collapse as you bring this hand down. Find that position for your head and neck. And then remember our students who might need a modification. Maybe a student has a spinal injury or osteoporosis and they need to keep certain areas of their spine straight. That's the case. They might want to bring this upper hand down. Remind them to stay long and supported through the spine and avoid you know, reaching and collapsing in this pose. So as we lengthen in all directions, Let's gaze upward and silently affirm, energy and joy flood my body cells. Joy descends to me. Energy and joy flood my body cells. Joy descends to me. Let's come out by bending our front knee, inhaling, reaching out and exhaling. Pause for a moment, standing tall. Let's close the eyes and feel the gathering of all the energy we've awakened from the standing poses. 
Lift that life force up to the brain. Feeling that sense of integration, strength, groundedness, and that upliftment of consciousness. Okay, great job with the standing poses. Let's make our way down to the floor now. And let's sit on the edge of a blanket for Janu Shirasana, head to the knee pose. You'll also need your strap. Let's start with our legs straight out in front of us. Really get your sit bones to the edge of your blanket so that you can sit with a straight spine. We aren't rounding here. So use the props that you need to set yourself up with a nice neutral spine. And for Janu Shirasana, head to the knee pose. We're going to start by bending the right knee in, rotating out from the hip. We're going to use a modified version of the pose with a strap. So just loop it around your left leg on the floor. We won't grasp it quite yet. And let's enter the pose by inhaling, stretching up through the arms first and exhaling as we circle our hands out. Let's place the strap on the ball of our foot and gently draw the strap toward you and then down a bit. You might have your elbows toward your waist. You might wrap the hands around the strap. Just find that comfortable position where you can focus on tilting your pelvis forward. That's really what we're doing in this first phase of the pose. So let's inhale as we lengthen our spine and exhale as we begin to tilt the pelvis forward, navel towards thigh, spine still straight. Let's do that a few more times, lengthening on the inhalations, releasing tension in the back of the leg on the exhalations. And as that tension releases, you'll find that your pelvis can tilt a little bit further forward, even if it's just micro movements. So this is the active phase of the pose, an excellent modification for students who have spinal injuries or osteoporosis. They can stay here the entire time. If you have a healthy spine, let's inhale, lengthen once more, and then exhale as you release your strap. You can lengthen your spine over that left leg. And if you're able to touch your foot, then you might interlace your fingers around the big toe or all of the toes. Just find a comfortable position where you can soften your upper body. And of course, if you're in the active phase, still honor your body and stay there. Either way, let's feel the length of our spine being offered forward over the leg. We're not trying to collapse, but rather keep the chest open as though it's lengthening forward toward the foot. Let's breathe diaphragmatically as our awareness is withdrawn inside. The relaxation phase is really the heart of the pose. So take your time here, breathing away resistance, keeping the leg active as we stretch out through the heel. And then to exit, you might use your hands on the ground to inhale, walk the hands in, sweep upward. And exhale as you pause. We can sit cross-legged for a moment. Just feel free to close the eyes. Even noticing the imbalance between left and right sides is a stepping stone toward finding that balance. So let's repeat on the other side. And stretch our legs out in front. This time we'll bend the left knee, drawing it in, rotating from the hip. 
using our strap on the ground to start around the right leg. Inhale as we press down through the sit bones, reach up through the arms. Exhale, tilt the pelvis forward as you grasp your strap. Keep your spine straight, which might mean just a very minimal movement from being vertical versus tilting forward. I know it's a small movement for me. And let's remember that even using the strap isn't for beginners. It can be for anyone to deepen their active phase of the pose. So let's inhale as we lengthen our spine. Exhale as we soften and tilt the pelvis forward. Just keeping the spine straight for a few more breaths. And if you're protecting your spine or your back today, remember to stay here. It's often safer just to keep the natural curves of the spine. Otherwise, let's lengthen once more with an inhalation before we exhale. Relax the upper body over the leg, finding that position for our hands that feels comfortable. Softening the shoulders, leveling them with the floor. Breathing naturally. Feel free to close your eyes if that helps you to internalize your mind and consciousness. And as you welcome the stretch, feel as though you're Practicing an attitude of openness and acceptance to whatever life brings you. Mentally affirming left and right and all around. Life's harmonies are mine. Left and right and all around. Life's harmonies are mine. To come out, this time we can inhale, reach our arms forward and up overhead. Exhale as we relax the arms. Just feel like you're surrounding yourself with calmness. And let's take a moment to close the eyes. Sit nice and tall. Feel as though the life force from the periphery of the body is being withdrawn inside. Inward and upward. And from that place of inner balance and harmony, let's affirm once more, left and right and all around, life's harmonies are mine. Opening the eyes, let's practice Sphinx pose next. So Sphinx is a great modification of Bhujangasana Cobra Pose. So let's start with Sphinx and we'll work our way to Cobra. Let's come on to the front side of our bodies, onto our abdomen. You can have your forehead on the mat to start. Your hands are going to be about at the level of your eyes. So next to the face, your feet can be hip width apart. And we're gonna ground our pelvis against the floor throughout the pose to protect our lower backs. And with Sphinx pose, we want our elbows drawn in toward the waist and shoulders away from the ears. So to enter, let's inhale as we lift just our head, engaging the back of the neck. Next inhalation, start to engage your upper back. So you're lifting the heart and chest. Next, inhalation, ground your pelvis a little bit more as you engage your lower back. And Sphinx is a great option for students who just need a gentler expression of the pose because it requires less back strength. They don't have to come up as far, in other words. 
And another option for Sphinx is you can slide your elbows forward so they come underneath your shoulders. That's optional. It requires a little bit more spinal flexibility as you create a deeper backward bend now. So with Sphinx, you've got your full forearms on the floor, a lot more stability and support. You can gaze upwards as you lengthen the back of your neck. This is a great option for students who have limitations in flexibility or strength. Maybe they have a spinal injury and they don't want to go as far into the pose. Could also be cardiovascular issues. And they need a gentler experience where they can breathe more easily. Let's take one more deep breath in Sphinx. Lengthening the spine and then exhale as you start to lower toward the floor. You'll naturally need to slide your hands and elbows back in. And you might turn your head to one side if that feels good. Relax your arms. You're also welcome to keep the elbows bent and rest your forehead or cheek on folded arms. Take a few breaths here. And next, let's try Bhujangasana, Cobra Pose. So the difference with Cobra now is we're going to take our hands from where they were at eye level and slide them back in so the hands are next to the chest underneath the shoulders. We still want our elbows drawn in toward the ribs. Legs are parallel as we lengthen back and we're grounding the pubic bone against the floor. So let's enter by inhaling, reaching the crown of the head forward, lengthening back through the legs, chest and heart lift and reach forward. And if you feel like your lower back needs more support, think of drawing your lower ribs in toward the spine, navel toward the spine. And let's focus on the energy surrounding our back, our spine, as we gaze upward, mentally affirming, I rise joyfully to meet each new opportunity. I rise joyfully to meet each new opportunity. Inhale once more. And then exhale as you slowly lower down. You might turn your head the other way if it was turned. Relax the arms, the legs. Relax your lower back as you breathe. Feel the energy flowing back to your brain. And let's give our lower backs a greater release by pushing back into extended child's pose. Bringing the buttocks to the heels if that's appropriate for you. Forehead to the mat or even on folded arms if you prefer. Just take a few breaths here to soften the lower back. And you can place your hands underneath your shoulders as you slowly inhale and press back to upright. And let's review next Vajrasana, firm pose. This is a great centering position. And let's try it with a blanket to remind ourselves of some of the ways that we can modify this pose for students who need it. So let's grab a blanket and let's open it up into about a large rectangle type fold and let's remember that we can roll up the back edge of our 
blanket if we have tight or injured ankles, or our students do, placing that roll just underneath the hollow of the ankle joint can be really helpful as you come into Vajrasana. So just experimenting with that, nice review to see how that feels, because even if you don't need it, your students might. Another option is to fold that blanket into more of a long, narrow rectangle. And we can place that in between our sit bones and heels. This can help students who have tight quads or injured knees and they need to have less flexion in that knee joint. Just notice how that feels for a moment. And of course you can also fold the blanket again maybe straddling it so you're not even placing any weight on your heels. This can work well for students who need to keep weight off of the feet or ankles. Okay, so another option here. And then just find your own comfortable Vajrasana. So if you don't need the blanket, just set that aside. And let's come into our Vajrasana firm pose. So place the right big toe over the left big toe if that feels okay for your feet and ankles. Place your palms at junction of thighs and abdomen or even right hand on top of the left. And let's lengthen up through the spine. Nice neutral spine, chest open and chin level with the floor. Let's Close our eyes. Take a moment to enjoy the centering effects of this very simple yet powerful pose. Feel as though the energy in your legs is gathering there at the base of the spine, being offered or directed upward. Vajrasana, firm pose. Enjoy that feeling of groundedness, steadiness, stability, and stillness. Silently affirming, in stillness, I touch my inner strength. In stillness, I touch my inner strength. And opening the eyes, you might just shift your hips off to one side to come out of the pose. We just have a couple more poses. Next, we're going to do a supine twist, a version of Jatara Parivartanasana. So let's come down onto our backs into a supine position. And we're going to keep our knees bent in this variation today. We can have our arms out to the sides, out from our shoulders, palms faced up. We're going to press down through our feet, lift our hips up off the floor and swing our hips over to the left a few inches and place the pelvis back down onto the floor. Then inhale as you lift your feet up off the floor Exhale as you start to rotate to the right. So you're coming onto the side of your right hip and your knees and legs are coming over to the right. And we're going to complete the twist by lifting our head and rotating to look out to the left. This is a nice modified twist. If your legs didn't touch the floor, you might have a prop underneath the legs to elevate them. You could also place a blanket or prop in between the knees and ankles if needed. But you do want to be able to relax your legs as much as you're able. And feel free to close your eyes as you tune in to some deep diaphragmatic breaths. 
feeling your legs, your external rotator of that outer hip, relaxing. Feel as though you're wringing out a sponge, squeezing out tension that might surround your spine and back. So that when we untwist in a moment, fresh blood, life force, and nutrients can flood not only our internal organs, but the spine, those inner nerve channels. On your next breath, let's lengthen the spine. Exhale as we bring our head back to center. You can engage your abdominals as you bring your legs back up. Shift your hips back to center. You can either straighten your legs or separate the feet and just rest the knees together for a moment between sides. And then let's repeat on the other side, pressing down through the feet. Lift the hips and swing them over to the right. Inhale as you bring your thighs to vertical. Legs are bent here at a 90 de degree angle. Let's exhale as we rotate to the left, bringing the legs to the left. Lifting our head up and rotating to look out to the right. Enjoy the soothing effects of this twist. And at the same time, avoid hanging on your joints or ligaments. So keep a sense of length up through your spine, down through that top hip as though it's lengthening away from the rib cage. And with this gentle modified twist, it could be suitable for some of your students with spinal injuries or sensitivities. Students with osteoporosis who need a gentler twist. As you breathe, let's feel a sense of openness in our hearts. As we open our palms to receive divine energy. And silently affirm, I open to the flow of God's life within me. I open to the flow of God's life within me. Inhaling once more. And as you exhale, let's Bring our head back to center, legs back to center, as well as our hips in line with our shoulders. And you can either straighten your legs in Shavasana or even rest the soles of the feet together if that feels good to release the inner thighs. Take some deep breaths in whatever position feels good. Soften your back and breathe. And if your feet are together in supine bound angle pose, you might place the hands on the outsides of your knees to bring the legs back in we're going to prepare for our final position, final pose, Viparita Karani, simple inverted pose. So to set up, we might do a spinal rock again, forward and back on the spine. And I'd like you to get a chair at this time as we prepare for simple inverted pose, our final full body inversion. 
So let's place a chair on our yoga mat so that it doesn't slip away during the practice of this pose. And then also get at least one open blanket in a sort of a square-like shape here. And you want to place it about a foot or so from the legs of the chair. If you know that you need more um, blanket support for shoulders or neck issues or other reasons, please get that now. Okay, so once you're ready to enter the pose, you want to swing your legs up onto the chair seat. And make sure that the blanket is in the right place so that the smooth edge of your blanket is about two to three inches away from the tops of the shoulders. You also want to be able to grasp the front legs of your chair. That's very important. So work on setting yourself up before you enter the pose. And if you need to see the pose first, best to watch first before you come into it. Otherwise, grasp those legs of the chair and bring the soles of your feet to the front edge of the chair. We're using a chair for this version today because it's a great way to help your beginners come into the pose step by step. So let's press down through the front edge of your chair seat and start to lift your hips up away from the chair. Keeping the hands on the legs of the chair, you can roll the shoulders under. So you really get onto the tops of the shoulders. And this might be your stopping point today. This is an excellent inversion. It could work for your students who have cardiovascular issues or some spinal injuries, possibly some students with osteopenia. So just remember, this is a great modification. If you're able to go further, you would then want to place your hands at the back rim of the pelvis, supporting the lumbar region and the fingertips touching the tailbone. If you want to take another step of working on your strength and balance, you might just straighten one leg at a time. This is another great variation. If you're feeling up for the full pose today, let's go ahead and lengthen up through both legs, supporting the back rim of the pelvis as our spine is at about a 45 degree angle from the floor. And we want to lengthen up through our inner legs, relax the feet, press down through the backs of the shoulders and elbows. Even the back of the head can press down to engage the neck. Your legs are nearly vertical. So if you were to draw a line from your toes, they would touch the abdomen. And let's tune into the energy at the base of our spine as though we're drawing it up to the brain. So we silently affirm, awake my sleeping powers, awake. Awake my sleeping powers, awake. And to exit, can bend one leg at a time, bringing the feet back to the chair. Release your hands and shoulders. You can roll your spine out. Rest with the legs up the chair. Relax your arms. Close your eyes. Take some deep breaths, feeling the effects of that full body inversion. Which helps to calm the mind and internalize the life force. And as we complete our asana routine with deep relaxation, you're welcome to take this blanket out from underneath you and enjoy elevated legs up the chair pose. Or if you prefer, take this time now to prepare for Shavasana corpse pose. So whether your legs are resting up on the chair, 
or you're in Shavasana, just take a moment to make some self adjustments. If you're in Shavasana, corpse pose, you might have a rolled blanket underneath your knees or underneath your neck or a prop underneath the back of your head. Wherever you're at, feel free to lengthen your tailbone down away from your head. Relax your legs. If you're in Shavasana, let the feet be about shoulder distance apart, so a little wider than hip width. You can glide your shoulder blades down away from your ears leaving some space in between the armpits with the palms turned upward. And lengthen the neck. Relax the throat open. And begin to breathe diaphragmatically. Close your eyes and gently lift your gaze toward the point between the eyebrows to help you stay awake and aware. Enjoy the gentle, soothing flow of your breath as the abdomen expands and relaxes. Feel the back side of your body touching the floor. The front side of your body is very open and free. Let go of your body now and all physical effort. As you lift your gaze to the point between the eyebrows. Offer yourself into a state of complete relaxation. Conscious relaxation. Rather than passive. Let's joy, enjoy a period of silence with this affirmation. Mentally affirm bones, muscles, movement. I surrender now. Anxiety, elation, and depression. Churning thoughts. All these I give into the hands of peace.
gently begin to bring your awareness back into your body. Let's take a deep breath in, deep breath out. Begin to slowly wiggle your toes and fingers. You can gently rock your head side to side. Feel free to stretch up through the arms or bend your knees. You can hug them to the chest. And feel free to rock side to side on your back. You might even make circles with your knees to massage your lower back. Sir. If you should move the blanket out of the way, it's kind of weird. Okay. <laughs> you can make circles with the knees to massage your lower back in both directions. And then feel free to Roll over onto your right side. Just pausing there. And then slowly using your hands to press yourself up as we prepare for meditation. <laughs> 